Okay, let's talk about isotopes. Now, when it comes to isotopes, isotopes are atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. Now, when it comes to atoms, and we are talking about an atom of the same element, of course, they are going to have the same number of protons because it's the protons that determine the identity of that atom. So if you have two different types of atoms and they have the same number of protons, you're simply talking about the same element. So for example, if I have two atoms and one atom has the atomic number of 17 and the other atom has also the atomic number of 17, that means they both have 17 protons. So essentially, I'm not talking about atoms belonging to different elements, but these atoms belong to the same element and that is chlorine because chlorine has the atomic number of 17. So in the case of isotopes, there are some elements that have atoms that have the same number of protons, of course, but different numbers of neutrons. Remember, within an atom, we have three particles, electrons that are found outside the nucleus, and within the nucleus is where we have protons and neutrons. Now, some atoms have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. Let me take an example of hydrogen. Hydrogen has three different types of atoms depending on the number of neutrons that they have. So, for example, in the first atom, this is known as protium, you're going to have one proton because the atomic number of hydrogen is always one. But when it comes to the neutron, it has no neutron whatsoever. It doesn't have any neutron, just one proton. Now, there is another type of atom of hydrogen that has one proton, but it also has a neutron. This is known as deuterium. There's also a third type of atom of hydrogen that has one proton, of course, but it has two neutrons. This is known as tritium. Now, if you look at these three atoms, what do they have in common? They have the same number of protons, which is one. Now, as such, they are going to have the same atomic number. Remember, atomic number simply refers to the number of protons in an atom. So they all have the atomic number of one. But when it comes to the neutrons, that is where they differ. One doesn't have any neutron, the other has one, and the other has two. So the mass number is going to be different. Now, when you talk about the mass number, this is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons. If you were to take the number of protons and the number of neutrons in an atom, add them together, that gives you the mass number. So just to lessen the confusion, atomic number is simply the number of protons. Mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. Now, in this case, because we are having the same number of protons, we are going to have the same atomic number. But because we have a difference in the number of neutrons, we are going to have a different mass number. So in the first one, in protium, we are going to have a mass number of one because that's one proton plus zero neutron. In the case of deuterium, we are going to have a mass number of two, one proton plus one neutron. In the last atom, we are going to have a mass number of three, one proton plus two neutrons. Now, am I still talking about the same element? Yes. All of these are atoms of the same element, which is hydrogen, because as mentioned before, it's the number of protons that determines which element this is. And as long as we have the same number of protons, we are still talking about the same element. So hydrogen has three isotopes, as can clearly be seen. By the way, you do not need to memorize the names of these isotopes. That is not important for you. Just know that there are three isotopes, and the reason why they are three is because they vary in the number of neutrons. Let me take another example of chlorine. Chlorine has two isotopes, isotope 35 and isotope 37. Now, in the case of the first isotope, what happens is that it's going to have 17 protons because the atomic number of chlorine is 17. So it's going to have 17 protons, but the number of neutrons is 18. So what is our mass number going to be? 17 plus 18 giving us 35. And that is the reason why it's referred to as chlorine 35. Now, if you want to simplify this information, you can simply write it as such using subscripts and superscripts. This is a subscript and it refers to the atomic number, which in the case of chlorine is 17. That is the superscript. It refers to the mass number, which in the case of chlorine 35 is 35 because of 17 plus 18.
Now, the other isotope of chlorine has 20 neutrons. So, if you're going to be talking about 17 protons, but the number of neutrons are 20. So, that gives us a mass number of 37. The atomic number, of course, remains the same. Now, when it comes to the isotopes, the abundance of the isotope is not similar. Okay, what do we mean by this? When you talk about chlorine having two isotopes, 35 and 37, it doesn't mean that half of chlorine atoms that exist are chlorine 35 and the other half are chlorine 37. No, it doesn't work as such. It differs from one element to another. So, for example, in the case of chlorine, most chlorine atoms actually have a mass number of 35 and not 37. Now, one thing I'd like to mention is this. Isotopes of an element will have the same chemical properties. So, for example, in the case of chlorine, chlorine 35 atoms and chlorine 37 atoms will have the same chemical properties. They're going to react in the same way. Why? Because they contain the same number of electrons. Remember, they both have the same number of protons, which is 17. Now, in an atom, in any atom, the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons. So, in the case of these two atoms, they're going to have 17 electrons each, and therefore, they will have the same chemical properties. It's the number of electrons in an atom that determines the chemical bonds it can form. Therefore, it determines the types of chemical reactions it can undertake. Now, let's do a question. In a sample of chlorine gas, the relative abundance of chlorine-35 atoms is 75%, and that of chlorine-37 atoms is 25%. Calculate the relative atomic mass of chlorine. Now, if you want to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element that has isotopes, such as in this case, what you can do is you're going to get the average of the mass numbers of its isotopes. If you find this confusing, I want you to do this. I want you to imagine that you have 100 chlorine atoms. Out of those 100 atoms, 75 are chlorine 35 atoms. That is, they have a mass number of 35 while the remaining 25 atoms have a mass number of 37. Now, once you know this, you want to find out the average relative atomic mass of chlorine itself, taking into account the different masses that these two isotopes have. So what you're going to do is you're going to use this formula. You're going to take the mass number of the first isotope multiplied by its relative abundance, which in this case has been given in percentage form plus the mass number of the second isotope multiplied by its relative abundance over 100 and that gives you the answer. So in this question, what are we going to do? We are going to take 35, that is the mass number of our first isotope multiplied by its abundance which is 75%. Brackets close, take 37 multiplied by 25 over 100. So the relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 taking into account the individual atomic masses of each isotope now i want you to look at the rm of the chlorine atom it's 35.5 and as you can see it's closer to the mass number of the isotope that is most abundant so the most abundant isotope is the isotope that has the mass number of 35 so you'll find that in any case if you have one isotope being more abundant than another, then the relative atomic mass of that element is going to be closer to that atomic mass. Let's do a second example. Naturally occurring magnesium exists as three isotopes. So there we have them. So the question is as such, if magnesium 24 has a relative abundance of 79% and the other two isotopes occur in equal amounts, calculate Roman 1, the relative abundance of each of the other two isotopes. Roman 2, the relative atomic mass of magnesium. Okay, so we are being told that magnesium 24 has the relative abundance of 79%. That means that the remaining percentage, which in this case is 21%, is going to be equally divided between the other two isotopes. So that gives us 10.5% for each. Roman 2, the relative atomic mass of magnesium. Now for this, we have to use our formula. So we are going to take the mass number of the first isotope multiplied by 79, which is its relative abundance. Brackets close, 
moving on to the second one 25 by 10.5 and the last one 26 by 10.5 everything over 100 our answer gives us 24.315 now again i want you to look at the final answer and you'll note that the relative atomic mass of magnesium is much much closer to that of the first isotope which is the most abundant now moving on to part b how many electrons does each atom of magnesium contain ah, this is an easy one by the way since they all have the same number of protons they're going to have the same number of electrons which is 12. part c how many neutrons does the atom of the most abundant isotope contain so the most abundant isotope is that now if we want to find the number of neutrons what you're going to do is we are going to take 24 which is our mass number minus 12 giving us 12 so 12 neutrons see how easy such questions are 